Severe Tropical Cyclone Jasper, now a Category 4 Cyclone threatening Queensland. Your latest update from Force 13 Australia. Well, it looks like a Category 5 is brewing in the Coral Sea at this time. Cyclone Jasper approaching that said intensity as it wraps itself up beautifully. You can see it on the satellite imagery right now, a gorgeous tropical cyclone rapidly intensifying at this time. It is putting on knots at a rate of knots. It's now up to peak winds of 160 kilometers an hour, gusting to 230 kilometers an hour. As per our latest analysis, the Bureau of Meteorology is still calling it a Category 3, but we're expecting them to update that in their next advisory. You can see right now, now, Category 4 strength cyclone, 10 minutes sustained winds of 160 km an hour, 230 km an hour gusts. A significant landfall on Queensland between Townsville and Cairns is possible. There is still a lot of uncertainty with where this storm is going to be tracking. However, anywhere that is going to be affected by the storm's core is going to get devastating rainfall totals and wind gusts. We're expecting this storm to move through Wheelis Island in around five days' time as a Category 2 strength tropical cyclone. Our forecast, as you'll see later on in the video, aligning with the Bureau of Meteorology forecast uh, right now is looking at the multimodal diagnostics you can see a peak intensity around that 110 knot threshold that is up towards category 5 status on the Australian scale it will definitely kiss that intensity well it's likely to kiss that intensity it probably won't hold it for very long wind shear is going to be rising in around 24 hours from now sea surface temperature is very good for the storm right now around 28 degrees Celsius middle humidity also looking good for the storm and you can see there's pretty good uncertainty in the next couple of days at least with where the storm is going be tracking but beyond that as you can see with our forecast cone right now there is heaps of uncertainty the storm is going to be um possibly moving anywhere between sort of uh, Rockhampton up towards uh, Cooktown sort of area, we could be seeing a landfall on Queensland and also some models suggest that this storm is just going to loop around itself and completely miss Queensland entirely and swing back towards Vanuatu and New Caledonia. So again, there's a lot of uncertainty here with where this storm is going to be tracking. Most likely going to be on a weakening trend as it approaches landfall, but because the sea surface temperature is just before said landfall, we'll likely be seeing a last minute dash of intensification for this system. So here's a look at the GFS model run right now. You can see peaking in the next 24 hours as a significant hurricane equivalent system winds above 100 knots as per the GFS guidance before some significant weakening. But once again, just a last minute bout of intensification as it makes landfall south of Cairns. The GFS um, now switching its forecast up entirely, calling for the storm to make a landfall far north of where it has been expecting in the last couple of days. We've been looking at Townsville, Airlie Beach, that sort of area for a landfall. But now we're looking at the storm moving north of Willis Island and making a direct hit or uh, close pass at least just to the south of Cairns, probably around Innisfail, uh, that sort of area there, before moving inland and dumping heavy rainfall over the inland communities such as Charters Towers, maybe even Mount Isa might get a good amount of rainfall from this system. Uh, speaking of rainfall, here is a look at it right now, significant rainfall totals expected with wherever this system's core passes directly over. Uh, Willis Island could get an absolute drenching from the system, but again, uh, landfall on Queensland, we could be seeing rainfall totals above 15 inches. That's up to 400 millimetres of rainfall, and I'm sure there'll be isolated pockets where we see dramatically higher amounts of rainfall, up to sort of 700 millimetres of, uh, of rainfall, probably around Tully or Innisfail, that sort of area, which has some of the wet, uh, wettest places in Australia, so no surprises that they're getting the absolute worst in this system. But that's the latest uh, on this part of the video. Let's jump onto windy.com and have a look at the forecast models and see where this storm is expected to be going. All right, so we're over here now on windy.com. Here's the latest satellite imagery on tropical cyclone Jasper. You can see it now has that defined eye-like feature, a very powerful western eye wall starting to develop as well. This storm is definitely brewing into something very significant indeed. The strongest system this part of the world has seen since probably Debbie, or actually, I guess, Naran of 2021, but uh, that really wasn't a land threat. But right now we're looking at a monster land threat from this system. Could be making landfall as a severe tropical cyclone, basically anywhere between Mackay and up towards Cooktown up here. So uh, we've definitely got a loaded gun forecast for Queensland. We've got a lot to get through in this part of the video. So make sure you stick around to the end and subscribe if you haven't already. This storm is a significant system. There is no two ways about it. Here's a look at the Eastern Rubio forecast model for it right now. The current sustained winds. Um, you can see the defined low level uh, center uh, through here. Pressure of 981 millibars on initialization, which means that the Eastern Rubio has initialized this system far too weak. 
uh, which means wins uh, from this run are probably not the most accurate, but uh, we could probably add about 50 or so knots to the sustained winds here and get a pretty accurate picture of what the storm is meant to be uh, peaking out on intensity at. So 60 knots here probably means that we're going to be looking at the peak intensity of around 110 knots at this time, which is about Friday midday and Friday afternoon for this part. Um, of the Coral Sea. It's then going to move uh, sort of in that uh, southerly to southwesterly trajectory before turning west and weakening a little bit. Now, I believe that's because of an increase in shear and dry air. And as it moves over the outer islands of the Coral Sea, we'll likely be seeing the storm maybe fall apart, fall below tropical, uh, severe tropical cyclone status, uh, briefly becoming a Category 2, maybe even a Category 1 as well, depending on how hostile conditions are. But just before landfall, it looks like this system makes a last minute dash of intense, uh, for intensity. Um, probably around here, Cooktown sort of area. If you extrapolate that, again, this is a pretty menacing picture for Cooktown. You can see a Category 2 cyclone here just offshore uh, with a bit of intensifying left to do. So we'll probably see that pressure drop a little bit uh, into Tuesday and Wednesday before a landfall late Wednesday. Uh, we'd be seeing peak wind gusts maybe approaching that 200 km an hour threshold for this part uh, of Queensland, which would definitely be a Category 3 severe tropical cyclone. I believe that's also in line with what the GFS model has to say as well with this system. You can see here just the last a dash for intensification just south of Cairns, uh, with the worst conditions being pumped ashore south of Innisfail into Tully, Cardwell, Ingham, that sort of area here. Uh, that's a worrying sign as well for rainfall. I mean, just take a look at the rainfall totals we're going to be seeing here. Up to 60 millimetres every three hours, just being dumped ashore uh, here into this mountainous terrain here. Um, famously, some of the wettest places in Australia, so we'll likely be seeing elevated rainfall totals as this system makes landfall, which looks to be late Tuesday night into Wednesday morning we'll be seeing uh, what could potentially be a Category 2, maybe even a Category 3 severe tropical cyclone make landfall here uh, south of Cairns. Now the access model is another model that I really want to talk about here. Uh, this is a completely different picture to what uh, the other models are saying and I don't think that this is going to happen but you can see the access model here which is the Bureau of Meteorology's own forecast model and wisely the Bureau of Meteorology are not following in with their own model here because I just don't see how this would happen is the system moves south and then stalls around Saturday, Sunday, uh, especially into Sunday and Monday, weakening quite substantially. And then into Tuesday, it just loops around over itself and barely moves within five days. Now, again, this isn't a perfect picture for Queensland. We'll be seeing some pretty significant swells be pumped ashore as a result of this. And you can see wave heights here will likely be elevated because of the winds 20 to 25 knots out of the south. Uh, so some pretty significant wave heights will probably be uh, moved ashore between Bundaberg right up towards Hope Vale, that sort of region here. So boating will be very unpleasant either way, which is um, pretty much expected when you get a significant tropical cyclone in the Coral Sea. Basically, all of the Coral Sea is rendered useless for boating. Uh, but again, that's a pretty interesting picture that the access model has painted for us. And the icon model, interestingly, actually has the same uh, forecast for the storm's track. And a pretty similar forecast intensity wise as well, peaking out with winds of, yeah, probably about 100 knots. Oh, that's wind gusts. Uh, my bad. Yeah, peaking out with winds of around 70 knots. Again, you could extrapolate that to around 100, 110 knots, uh, one minute sustained, which is approaching category five status. So all around, it does look like this system is going to get very close to category five status. It doesn't have too much more climbing to do in terms of intensity. It is already a very powerful tropical cycle and it's looking absolutely gorgeous on satellite imagery. As I'm sure you'd agree. Very photogenic and a menacing picture for Queensland right now, that's for sure. Let's take a look at rainfall accumulation over the next five days. I believe the picture for Queensland isn't that bad yet. I think it's more sort of the five to 10 day threat that we're looking at. But again, the outer bands of the system could bring some pretty significant rainfall in shower bands uh, between Mackay and up to Townsville here. That's sort of approaching 50 millimeters of rain over the next five days. Nothing uh, catastrophic or life threatening. However, pretty significant in the fact that it could come in shower bands uh, from very intense thunderstorms and the like. So again, we'll be watching this one very, very closely indeed, but a pretty significant cyclone all ground is expected here, probably peaking in the next 24 hours or so before wind shear gets the better of this system. Um, I believe wind shear actually comes up quite a little bit as it moves into the more western extremities of the Coral Sea. Um, 
Yeah, so system moves through there. In fact, actually, Saturday, Sunday, it looks pretty good for the system all around. Maybe about 10 knots of wind shear where the system is. So maybe it's dry air that gets this system here. Um, yeah, the ECM WF actually has pretty significant amounts of wind shear moving around the system. Um, but yeah, it'll be very interesting to see what this system does. The main climate driver for this system right now is a high pressure system down uh, towards uh, the Tasman Sea sort of area uh, between New Zealand and Australia. Now, the weaker this high pressure system is, uh, sort of the further south this storm is going to be allowed to drift but right now it remains fairly strong so we're probably going to be seeing this system pushed further north which is why we're seeing this predicted landfall around the Cairns region but if this high pressure system uh, down here and up through here around Norfolk Island area completely dies off we're going to have a very very bad situation indeed we'll be seeing a landfall as far south as Bundaberg which isn't completely off the cards yet however it's looking very unlikely. Now, a lot of the comments on uh, recent videos that we've been uploading have been concerned around potential landfall si uh, sites. Uh, we're most likely gonna be seeing a landfall between Mackay up towards Cooktown at this time. There's probably a 90% chance of a landfall occurring within the next seven days between those two locations. We're gonna be watching this system very closely, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Um, for future updates but that is yeah where we're expecting the landfall at this time and it will most likely be a pretty significant tropical cyclone category two category three category four seems a little bit high end at this time but we'll have to wait and see over the next couple of days with how this system peaks out as uh, but yeah again a lot of factors in the forecast here we don't know too much yet uh, beyond the sort of 48 hour period but over the next couple of hours into the next couple of days as we get closer to this Queensland landfall and when this storm finally makes its more westerly turn uh, in its track then we'll know a lot more with what this system is probably going to do so stay tuned for that there's a lot for the oceans to decide right now um, but yeah uh, make sure you are weather aware just be prepared uh, for a significant tropical cyclone if you are on the Queensland coastline if you live in a flood prone area especially and area prone to ocean flooding uh, wherever you are on the Queensland coast make sure you are preparing your sandbags and so forth have your flood plan in place right now because uh, there's no two ways about it there's going to be some pretty significant nasty wave heights moving ashore uh, anywhere between Cooktown down towards Mackay so make sure you are being prepared for those but that's the latest from Force 13 Australia make sure you are subscribed follow out our outlets that's all from us I'll catch you all in the next storm goodbye